So I've got a couple of things to show here. It's going to be a look at the charger that I use and what props I've used so far. So this is Ishin Tyro 69. So for the charger, it's a Ultra Power UPS4 AC. It can take a 2 pin AC, 100 volt to 240 volts. But I've actually broken that, so I was trying to draw max current out of it and uh, it popped. So now it only works using an XT60, which goes between 7 volts and 17 volts. So that is basically 2S to 4S. Anything more or less won't work correctly. It allows you to charge using the balance port and you can charge up to four batteries at the same time, up to one amp. So to use it, you literally plug in the XT60. You then get your input voltage, four batteries selected. So we've got the choice for setting the current up to one amp. And you can also set whether you want high voltage or normal and leave them do a NIM battery. You can set these individually as well. So after that, it is literally a case of plugging the battery in, which this one should be fully charged. So it's it's at 8.38 volts already. The red light comes on. It's now charging. So I'll leave that running for a minute, and then we'll have a look at the propellers. So the ones it comes with, these are... 65mm L Dark comes with 10 pairs of those. Um, and I found on high throttle these were extremely flexy. And the first crash that I had, it bent one of the tips, and even after bending it back, it was unflyable because it was way too vibration-y. Uh, these ones do not require screws, they're just push fit. So moving on, we've then got these next. So they are Gem fan flash, 2543 blades. Now these ones, the center is not actually tight enough, which means you have to fit the screws. I found seven millimeter long screws fit. Six mil is way too short, and potentially you could get away with eight. But what I don't want to do is start hitting the coils in the motor because that's not going to end well. Uh, and then I actually managed to borrow a set of these which are a van rush okay so yeah that's the sound it makes once it's charged it's got milliamp hour readout and the light goes green so fantastic so just unplugging that for now we don't need that anymore so back to this these are a van rush two and a half inch props push fit so you do not have to use the screws which i prefer um, they are very grippy in the air. I mean, you can really feel them trying hard. They're quite a, uh, what feels like a high pitch propeller. The motor, struggle is the wrong word, but you can tell that the motor's trying to spin them at full throttle. Uh, the difference between these, full throttle was getting oscillations, probably because they were spinning faster. These ones have got such a high pitch that I no longer got the oscillation, which is fantastic. The downside to having push fit is it's really difficult to get them on and off of the motor. So that is to be taken into account. You have to be quite delicate. You don't want to bend the shaft. You don't want to break the motor. because that's going to ruin all your fun. And then the final thing is the camera and VTX. Now, you may be able to see the amount of glue that I've got all over the uh, VTX antenna here. So I've used hot glue gum, and I've purposely not coloured this area in black, uh, whereas the front ones, which you can barely tell, are hot glued. If I zoom right the way in here, you can see the front ones are actually hot glued as well but I've culled those in with a black sharpie upon the recommendation of Tobias Thompson and uh, the back just needs tidying up a little bit but basically every time you crash that camera will pop out of that 3D printed mount um, and the antenna at the back that was starting to uh, 
snap off where the ground, the uh, braided section, is actually soldered onto the VTX. So that's all now been secured in place with a piece of hot glue. I'll tidy that up at some point, but I mean, aesthetics really don't matter. It's all about the flight. And the final thing was to put a blob onto each of the nuts so that they can't fall off. They're plastic, the stack will move around on impacts and they will snap and you're better off having them secured so they don't fling off. And then, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, where I initially had the receiver antennas coming out here on a cable tie, the cable tie pushed up, the propeller spun round and it chopped straight into it, which is now why this one is much shorter than this one. Now, it still gets a good range with it as it is, but this way, there's no chance that I can damage those. So that's fantastic. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so there is actually a rubberized, like, gel Uma Grip style thing, which I've put onto the bottom, and it's just, if you were to Google, like, phone... A rubber dash mount or something like that you get this and then all I did was just cut a small rectangle out of it you get many many drones done with a small piece and it was like a pound a dollar something like that not very expensive at all the um, battery strap is pretty useless but with the Uma grip style battery gel it's perfectly adequate so I'll just continue running it as it is really for the time being alright bye